Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, we're going to do a, a little bit of a uh, ministry update, kind of like we do walk and talks or stand and talks. And we're going to integrate the uh, monthly, because we need to get our monthly prayer request uh, video out there so people can put their monthly prayer requests and everything. And one of the things i got to bring up um, is because of me parting ways with Brother Brian, now I'm getting tons of people in the comment section, not tons, but some people in the comment section that are from the Robert Breakerites, the Easy Believism, um, and Edward P.S. and whatnot, the Easy Believism crowd coming over thinking that we're best friends. Okay, we're not best friends. Okay, the true plan of salvation in the Scriptures is repentance towards God. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrows of the world work at death. The number one reason people won't repent is because they love the world. Okay. Sorrows of the world. They love the way the world is and they want to be a part of the world. They don't want to leave the world to get saved. And I'm not talking about sinless perfection. I'm not talking about cleaning up your life before you get saved. That happens afterwards. But it's that heartfelt desire that my life is so wicked and so vile. I'm just worthless, Lord. I can't stand this life anymore. Lord, I've sinned against you. That brokenness. Lord, I've sinned against an almighty righteous God that's going to judge me one day. That heartfelt desire that you want to be saved. Lord, I need to get saved. How do I get saved? Brings us to the second part. Believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Not just the death, burial, and resurrection. If you just believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, that belief is in vain. No changed life. Why? Because you didn't repent. You just believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. You're lost. You're on your way to hell. you got to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. He said it is finished. Paul says you're not to use liberty, because liberty is always referred to what Jesus Christ did on the cross. You're not supposed to use liberty as an occasion for the flesh. Are we to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Okay. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Paul's saying there's no changed life. So your belief is in vain. Believing in the death, burial, and resurrection will not save you. God does the saving. But if you refuse to believe in the finished work, and the only way you can believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross is if you come in true, total repentance. That's what I teach. It hasn't changed. And it will never change because that's what the Bible teaches. Okay, I've had tons and tons of people, easy believism, people who truly teach that you have to do works in order to be saved, trying to bring you under some kind of a law. It used to be the Levitical laws with the Jewish people. Today it's the Greeks, uh, Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, the whore of Babylon, trying to bring you under laws in order to be saved. Okay, Brother Brian never taught that. Don't come over here. I told you I'm going to start deleting comments. If you come over here and start trying to rile things up and try to start fights again between me and Brother Brian, you're gone. Your comments is gone. I'm deleting them. Okay? It's one thing to say, hey, he, his pride and his arrogance is, is killing him. It's destroying him. That's one thing. But you come over and you start trying to attack absolute truth using Brian as an excuse because Brian did teach truth. He's just slowly falling away from it. Okay. I'm going to delete your comments. Okay. I am not on the easy believism side because I decided I have to part ways with Brother Brian. Doesn't mean now I'm on your side, the easy believism side. Uh, no. He taught the true plan of salvation. Okay. I'm going to keep teaching the true plan of salvation. So just so you know, I'm going to start deleting comments. You start coming on. Oh, he teaches us. Uh, uh, was it Lordship Salvation? Chapter and verse on Lordship Salvation. Uh, Lordship Salvation. Okay, it's not there. Uh, but teaching that you have to keep the law in order to be saved is there. Okay, that's the only thing we can go off of. That's why I say that. Either through the gen Gentiles, that was today, which have Mystery Babylon, the Catholic Church, and all her daughters, you know, uh, Presbyterian, uh, all, I can go through all, the, even Baptists today. Uh, they become closet Catholics because it's all about doing works in order to be saved. Right? Oh no, it's easy believism. It's easy believism. No, it's works in order to be saved. You have to go to a, ba a, a good local church, a, a Bible building, a temple made with hands. You've got to do wear your Sunday best. You've got to donate 10% tithe. All of these works. 
that don't line up in Scripture. All right? they're, the, the, they're, the, they're the laws of man. They're the traditions of men, rudiments of the world, customs of men. Okay, that's customs as laws, customs of men. Um, so, I just wanted to point that out there real quick, okay? I am not on your side just because Brother Brian and I had to part ways. I'm still standing through the true plan of salvation. I've been preaching it even through this whole time that I've been disagreeing with Brother Brian on Christmas, how he applies it to liberty, how I disagree on Brother Brian, that he's turning his back on Jesus Christ, looking for Jesus Christ every day with the life that he's living. Okay, he doesn't believe in the imminent return of Jesus Christ anymore. So now he's looking at the world and not looking for Jesus Christ. I disagree with him in these areas. Okay, but that doesn't mean I'm going to turn my back on the true plan of salvation. That doesn't mean I'm going to turn my back on, may, uh, on true doctrine. Okay, when someone starts becoming part of the falling away, I don't know how far they're going to fall. Okay? I don't. I'm going to do my best to stick to this. But the whole point is, is I'm going to be deleting your comments. You come over trying to say, like, what is the part? If you have a constructive uh, criticism, you know what constructive criticism is? It's correction that's constructive. It's meant to build someone back up. Okay, that's what constructive means. Do you have anything constructive to say to build somebody up? If all you're going to do is come on and make comments that tear people down, your, your, uh, your comments are going to be deleted. Okay, not going to have it. Okay. So I had to make that point real quick before we get into the prayers. Uh, the thing is, Brother Sister Christ, when it comes to the true plan of salvation, I'm going through the Old Testament right now with the uh, Hebrews and how God would say, this is how you're supposed to do it. And they would do it their way. They didn't want to do it God's way. They wanted to do it their way. And remember, it takes faith to go through repentance. What's faith again in the Bible in the book of Hebrews? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you repent, you're falling on your knees before an almighty righteous God that you cannot see. And you're hoping that he can hear you. Lord, I'm, and having that sorrow in your sin towards an almighty righteous God, hoping he can do something about it. Hoping that there might be a way that you could be saved. It takes faith to go through repentance. It takes faith to go into belief of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It takes faith to confess both in prayer. Once again, you're praying to a God that you cannot see and you're hoping he hears you. The Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. You ask, call means ask, you ask God to save you. Some of us were begging God to save us because we don't deserve it. No one does, but we actually came, some of us, you come to him really broken because you have just a horrible, wicked, sinful life. We all need to come to him that way. Okay? But the Jews in the Old Testament would do things their way. And they'd get punished. Okay? What's the big thing about easy believism? What's the big thing about adding works, laws, in order to be saved? It's you're still trying to do it God's way. Instead of going through the faith that God says you're supposed to go through, you want to make up your own faith that you can do things your way. Oh, you can be a Christian and just have the world. Well, that's the way I want it. I'm not talking about me, but I'm talking about the easy believism. That's the way they want it. I want to be a Christian and have the world. I want to be the final authority. Yea, hath God said, I can be as God's knowing good and evil. They don't want to do things God's way. That is still the true plan of salvation. Okay? That's there. So, uh, we're going to get into some Bible studies here in a little bit um, later in the week. Uh, one of my biggest things is a brother in Christ in the comment section made it very clear, and it's a good point. My advice here for the next couple of weeks is to get away from the computer. Get away from and uh, grab your Alex recording of Alexander Scorvey and come out here. This is morning time, which is why it's not as bright. The sun's just coming up. I love sitting out here listening to the Word of God, and you can see the light tips where the beams just barely hit the tips of the trees because the sun comes up, especially when we're on the mountainside. Um... I love to watch the sun go down. I like to looking at the water. I like looking at the birds. And I listen to Alexander Scorvey for hours out here on the deck. Uh, you can take it to the park and listen to Alexander Scorvey. You can, I got the beach here. There's been a few times that I've gone down to the beach and played the recording of Alexander Scorvey reading the King James Bible. And I'm sitting there listening to God's Word. 
on the beach. Uh, we need to take a break from the from online junk. And I'm not saying I'm junk, but I'm just saying the whole thing about the, the falling away, brethren falling away, these wolves in sheep's clothing whispering in your ear saying, oh, you're just so great, oh, you're just so awesome when they're lying. They're just trying to puff you up and get you prideful. And, uh, oh, did you hear about this guy? Did you have the gossip, the whispering, the backbiting? We need to get away from all this stuff. And you need, a brother in Christ had a good, brother or sister in Christ, please forgive me if it was a sister in Christ, with names online, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. But a brethren had a great idea that we need to get away from the internet for a while. Get away from YouTube, Rumble, whatever, and you need to get back to the basics. This right here. You need to get back into the Word of God, and you need to get back into prayer and start praying. So uh, that was a really good idea, and that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm still doing Bible studies for myself, right, typing it up, but I've been spending hours and hours out here lately, especially what I've been going through. Uh, just listening to the Word of God and praying. When you're going through troubled times and tough times, whether it's a loss of a loved one, uh, what happened with me with a brother in Christ, a mentor, losing a brother in Christ, losing a mentor, um, being, mis you know, being mistreated. When you're going through hard times where they're being persecuted by the world, I have brethren that get persecuted by the world with the jobs that they work at and everything. The number one thing that helps you through any hard time, any tough time, well, Paul was talking about, uh, you know, we despaired of life and death. The best thing that gets you through is, one, the Word of God, His precious promises, that blessed hope. Don't let, brethren don't let men in ministry steal your crown. Okay, don't let men in ministry who teach post and mid-trib uh, to steal your crown and don't let brethren that fall away that say I'm not looking for Jesus Christ to come back any day now to steal your crown brother says Christ that blessed hope is what gets me through each day I sit out here in my tough times and I look up and say Lord is today the day and then I start thinking about being absent from the body present with the Lord and I start thinking about the precious promises that God has given us um, I start thinking about things above because I believe in my heart that Jesus can come back any day because that's what I'm commanded to do by Scripture. The Bible says in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, that we might be redeemed. Might. It might not happen in my lifetime. It might happen in my lifetime. But I'm supposed to live as if it could happen in any time in my lifetime. It could happen. The catching away of the body of Christ can happen. It's a blessed hope. All right. Don't let me steal your crown. So the blessed hope that we have in the scriptures, the word of God, will get you through. And the second thing that gets us through is prayer. Praying to God personally, having a personal relation with Jesus Christ with prayer. You're talking. You talk to the Lord about anything and everything and make sure to be reverent. He's still God. He's King of Kings, capital K King, capital L Lord, Savior, capital L Master. He's our friend too. Okay, Bible says if... Jesus said, you are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Okay? He's all those things. Be reverent, but pray and talk to the Lord about everything and anything. He's, he's there for you. Which leads into the monthly prayer, prayer request. Okay? Monthly prayer request. I want to thank the Brother Sister Christ for praying for Victoria. She seems to be doing a lot better. Got the bad teeth out. She's got a lot more energy. She's barking more. She's jumping up and she's running all over the place. And... She's starting to slow down a little bit in the last couple days, but I'm wondering if a lot of, I've talked to some neighbors, I've talked to my brother in Christ, my uncle, um, and thinking that maybe 5G is being tested or something, and that's what's getting us down, or what I'm going through is definitely can get you down, what I'm going through can really get you down too, but physically, everything seems to have been slowing down in the last couple days with everybody around here, and it's like, okay. A lot of them took, I know some of them took, um, took something that they shouldn't have took, and if some of you have been following the ministries. I can't say it because if I say it, I'll get kicked off of uh, YouTube. Um, the video will get kicked off of YouTube. Uh, but I've said it on Rumble, my Rumble channel. So, um, but she's doing good. And I, pr I thank the Lord and I praise the Lord to God be the glory. And I thank the Lord for you, Brother Jesus Christ, for praying for me. So that was a prayer request last month. And then last month I did a prayer request for my daughter, uh, mainly for our relationship. And then I had to do a quick prayer request because she was sent to the hospital for medical reasons. And she didn't make it. 
and she passed away. Um, so I uh, chose the Word of God, it pushed and living a life of Christ, and it pushed my daughter away from me. And I, I lost my daughter. Um, so I, you know, that could be why I'm down too and just don't have a lot of energy. Um, but I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Brother Sister Christ, for your prayers. I do, I thank you. So this month, it's another month. If you got the same prayer request, you can have the same prayer request. Put the prayer request in the bottom so a brother can look at it and say, okay, I have someone. When they just feel down and they want to pray and they pray for themselves, which is great, and then you get to the point where I want to pray for the brethren, you can look at this list and say, okay, here it is. You can write out the list and have it like a prayer card where you can sit out here like I am on the deck and you can pray for the brethren. Okay. So put your prayer request down below. This month, I'm trying to save up I think that's another blessing from the Lord um, uh, that I'm able to save a little bit more money than than normal, um, and I'm saving up to get a wood stove because the pellet stove broke on me. So I'm hoping that by this month or next month I can afford a wood stove. It's going to wipe me out completely <laughs> all my savings, but it's it'll be a blessing from the Lord, and that's my prayer request that uh, from the brethren. Right now it's not a necessity. Uh, I've got uh, heaters. We haven't had huge storms like we did last winter that knocked the power out. I haven't lost power for days on end. Like I lost power for five days last year. Um, so it's not a necessity. I can wait and slowly build up until next winter if we're still here next winter if the body of Christ hasn't been caught up. But it's one of the things that I'm working on trying to get, Brother Sis Christ, is two things. I'm trying to get a wood stove and I'm trying to save up, and I still don't know how that's going to work, but save up for a couple of uh, solar panels um, to run the refrigerator and the freezer. So it might be a four-set solar panel or something and have it hooked up where it's just for running the fridge and the uh, freezer. Um, so if you lose power, it still runs, and the food doesn't go bad. If for anything, because I believe hard times are coming, and we might still be here during those hard times, I might lose power completely, period. So I've got to start figuring out ways to live. And the wood stove that you can cook off of is the number one thing. Brother says Christ, you can't really do it if you live in town because they're really trying to outlaw uh, wood stoves even out here where I'm at. Uh, the, the government's trying to push free. Here, here's free pellet stoves. Here's free pellet stoves. But the problem with most free pellet stoves is they require electricity. No electricity, no pellet stove. I found one good pellet stove that looked like it was working great that had no power. It's pretty neat, it looked like a Z, and then they see the the funnel go up, um, funnel, but the uh, tube goes up where the smoke comes out. Um, it was a pretty neat design, but it's designed to automatically auto feed, drops down, and you've got to really fiddle, fiddle with it to get it going good and how hot you want it. And it looked like a really good thing, it really did, if you really want pellets, but then you still have to figure out how to get pellets. Well, then you have to buy something that makes pellets that you can turn wood into pellets. And it's like, why don't you just do a wood stove? Why don't you just stick with the wood stove? Okay. Um, but uh, that's what I want. I want a wood stove, Brother Sis Christ. So that's my prayer request this month. Um, and the bigger one, it's more important than the wood stove. It's more important than the two solar panels. That's my goal in the future. And I gotta fix things up around here a little bit here and there. Um, as I pray that for my prayer request is that uh, this is an old house that's falling apart that just stays together for as long as it can. But more important than all of that, the number one prayer request that we should that I'm asking the brethren to please, please, please pray for is pray for each other when it comes to the falling away. Please pray for the brethren, those who are still standing, that God keeps them standing, that they stay humble and understand that. I am not above this falling away. It could never happen to me. That's when pride comes in. Lord, keep me on your path. Help me to be sober, to be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, go around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Help me to keep my eyes on you because I can easily get distracted by the world and start being pulled away. We need to be praying for the brethren that are still standing, that they stay standing. And we need to pray for the brethren that have fallen that Lord pick them back up, pick them back up and get them back on the right path. Okay? That's our number one, my number one prayer. It's probably going to be my number one prayer every month. 
for for the long for a long time because we're we're in the last step before the falling away, and that's I mean the falling the last step before the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, and that's by word. I believe it, but if you're living it, then you're looking for it every day. If you're living it, okay, I'm looking for it every day, and I understand that I'm seeing that there's a falling away, uh, not. A falling away where you have these wolves. In, we're going to get into this more in another study. But wolves in sheep's clothing and you have false converts. That's not falling away. That's called Satan's plan and Satan's lies and deception and whatnot. Okay. But the falling away is someone who truly stood for absolute truth. And a good example is they once stood for the catching away of the body of Christ happening any time with the life that you live. That's how you're supposed to live according to the scriptures. And they've fallen away from that. There's brethren that have fallen away from... Um, standing for this book as being perfect and they start falling away they once stood this book this is the perfect this is this king james bible is god's perfect written word and there's nothing wrong with the word bible bible just means collection of books it means a library okay where do you find the holy scriptures where do you find it's like saying where if this was on a shelf if i said the holy scriptures on that shelf oh i said the shelf it's not in the bible see that's pretty dumb there's nothing wrong with Bible saying Bible, okay? Because today there's so many fake Bibles out there, okay? What we call um, Bible perversions. But if you want to know where to find the Holy Scriptures in English, you'll find it in a collection of books called a Bible, the King James Bible. Okay? But there's some people that fall away from the King James Bible and say, eh, maybe it's not a perfect written Word of God. Well, maybe it's just, you know, it's got some errors in it. Maybe I see this one guy, he changes the words in the Bible. Maybe I can change the words in the Bible and you become a scribe. We're seeing the following way where people once stood for the truth, where they, were, they refused to be Pharisees, they attacked Pharisees, now they become Pharisees. They used to attack scribes, thus saith the Lord, Scripture alone, this is our foundation, all matters of faith and practice, and now they're saying, well, maybe I can tweak, tweak it a little bit and mess with God's Word a little bit. Scri uh, Pharis uh, Sadducees, I'm trying to say the right one, Sadducees. Oh no, I believe in the resurrection up here and down here. But down here they stop believing, it's just up here. You say what? They don't believe in the imminent return of Jesus Christ. They don't live every day as if Jesus Christ can come back today with the life they're living. They're not looking for that blessed hope, it's an action. Their actions aren't looking for that blessed hope. They start taking their eyes off Jesus and they start putting it down here on the world. And you start getting distracted by the world. And I'm not attacking anyone. I'm warning the brethren. We need to pray for brothers and sisters in Christ. Pride comes in and destroys Christians. Um, envy comes in and destroys Christians. Love of money comes in. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. While some have coveted after, they have erred from the faith. So one time they were in the faith and they erred from it. There's so many things in this world today, Brothers Christ, that are tearing true Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women down and getting them to go the way of the world, and it's called the falling away. And God said it's going to happen. Not that He's for it. He said it's going to happen. It's prophecy. Okay? And we're seeing it. So one of the things we desperately need to do, Brothers and Sisters Christ, is we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ, for the ones standing, for the ones that have fallen. You don't just say, oh, they've fallen, so I'm just going to kick them to the side. They're nothing. We need to be praying for them, that God will pick them back up and get them back in that standing point. Okay? That's one of the biggest prayers above all prayers. Okay? Please, please, brothers and sisters, that's the biggest prayer above all prayers. Um, but uh, like I said, my two requests for right here, they're not, right now, present tense, they're not necessities, they're not needs, they're a request. The Bible talks about let your request, requests be made known unto God. So these are just requests, some things I'd like to get done. Um, pray for this ministry. I, I believe there's only one ministry. It's the ministry of God. The Bible says there's only one body. There's only one ministry. But there's, def there's many members. There's mem many parts of that ministry. So people are part of parts of that ministry, but it's one ministry. It's God's ministry. But pray for my part in the ministry. Okay. Pray for this ministry that... No matter what happens, that I don't become part of the falling away, okay? That I'm standing for the word of God. And I know the enemies will 
try to say he is part of the falling away. Let him talk. They can talk all they want. But Brother Strikes, like I said, in the comment section, if it's not constructive, I decided, I always said I try not to delete any comments. If you disagree with me, do it in a constructive way using scripture. If you come on disagreeing with me with feelings and opinions and then name calling and whatnot, you will be deleted. Your comments will be deleted. I'm not feeding your flesh and I'm not playing Satan's game. If you come on, if you've noticed lately, I've been having to put that on there. I just want to remind the brethren, don't pat me on the back in the sense of, hear me out. Don't be telling me, you're just so great and you're just so awesome and you're, you're the greatest Bible preacher or you're this or you're that. I am going to get on there and I'm going to correct you and I'm going to say, to God be the glory. Give God the glory. Stop giving me all the glory. Give God the glory. And if I see that there's a pattern of you doing it all the time, giving me all the glory, I'm going to delete your comments. Why? Because I see that in other brethren's ministries where people are just puffing them up and puffing them up. And I, I believe some of these are bots. If you ever know what a bot is, it's like they're not even real people. Um, but some of them are servants of Satan. They see a little pride there and then they start puffing you up. The Bible says in all things, we're supposed to give God the glory. Whether in word or in deed, give God the glory. Do all things to the glory of God. We're to give God thanks in all things. Please, 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 don't steal glory from, the God, from God and give it to me. If you want to exhort me, like the Bible says, do it the Bible way. I thank God for, your for you being in ministry. I thank God for this teaching that you just showed me. God used you. That's giving God the glory. Don't be giving the, taking all the glory from God and giving it to me. I need to watch out and I'm trying not to say, well, I did this and I did that and I've done that. To God be the glory. God blessed me and allowed me to do this and God helped me do that. And it was only by God's grace that he showed me this that I was able to share with you, brothers and sisters Christ. We need to get back to giving God all the glory. That could be another prayer request. To get, that the brethren get back to giving God all the glory and all the thanks in the life that they live and in ministries. And the ministry, but the different parts of ministry, people in ministry. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so prayer request. Go ahead and put them in the comment section. I pray for you, brother, sister Christ, every day. One of my prayers is that God, I know this is for the lost, but I've been using it for instruction and righteousness for the saved. It says, open the eyes of the blind, both saved and lost. Open the eyes of the blind. Brethren can become blind and start going the wrong direction. Okay? They can't. It's called the falling away. And sometimes we keep miss, we keep seeing the falling away, and instead of wanting to want to believe, we don't want to believe that a brother, no matter how great that brother in Christ is, but to God be the glory, uh, to God be the glory of a servant of Christ. He's a servant of God. God be the glory. No matter how great a servant gets, they become a part of the falling away and we just automatically go, we've been taught and trained against the scriptures, we've been taught that they're automatically lost. If they fall away, they're automatically lost. Well then, that defeats the prophecy of the falling away. The brethren that were once in a standpoint would fall away. So, we need prayer, brother says Christ, hardcore prayer for the body of Christ in these last days. This is their final authority. They're living it, that they keep their eyes on Jesus Christ every day with the life that they're living. And the only way you do that is if you believe in that blessed hope. If Jesus is coming back tomorrow, when you have the attitude, if Jesus is coming back tomorrow, what are you doing for him today? That's a great attitude. Oh, Jesus isn't coming back for another 5, 10, 20. He might not even come back in my lifetime. Where's the motivation? Where's the hope? Where's the looking for the blessed? You're not looking for the blessed hope. Well, there is no hope. He's not coming back in our lifetime. I, I can take my time. I don't have to bust my butt for Jesus every day and living for Jesus every day. I can just slack off. And that's what some people have gone to. So brothers and sisters in Christ, we desperately need prayer among the body of Christ. So please, please, please pray for the body of Christ. That should be our main prayer. But in the comment section, put your prayer uh, requests. And I, I pray for you. The, brother, the brethren are praying for you. Um, we need to get back to praying really hardcore. That brother in Christ, sister in Christ, had a great idea. Get back out here. Get back out here in God's creation and start praying. You live in the city, there's parks around. I used to live in the city too, and I had to walk a good ways to find a park. 
find a, some quiet places to set down and relax and just be among trees and God's creation and everything. Uh, you can sit on your back deck. Uh, even if you live in a city, there's still trees here and there and bushes. You can sit out somewhere and just listen to the Word of Christ and get away from the, uh, the online ministries and the Internet for a while. Okay? Just spend some time with God in His Word and in deep, deep prayer. That was a great idea. So I want to end this, and I hope you can see me, but I want to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.